Hi, I'm Uwe Hilgert, and I'm joining you today from the University of Arizona in Tucson. I am a professor in the Bio5 Institute, and my interests are in microbiology, genetics, and bioinformatics, and in STEM education. I also teach, and I used to work for many years in Cold Spring Harbor with a great team at the DNA Learning Center. Welcome, and thank you for joining me for a bioinformatics laboratory to examine and solve an issue with the human genome, a missing chromosome. You can follow along. If it's a little fast, just go back and uh, rewind the recording. And um, there's also a pretty detailed worksheet available either through the DNALC Live website or through the URL on the screen here. Let's talk about bioinformatics for a big little bit. DNA uses four letters to encode all life. It's a code, therefore. And just as language uses 20 letters and computers and Morse codes use two letters, DNA is a code that uses four letters in the nucleotides. Now, at the same time, DNA is like a hard drive. It's not doing anything, but it stores information. So it has an important function, and proteins are life stewards. Bioinformatics uses computers and software to understand how living organisms uh, deal with information. On the other hand, understanding how life handles information will advance information technology, computers, and software, not only for biomedical research, but for anything we need computers at, if that's in finance, uh, weather prediction, traffic control, doesn't matter. How close are human and chimpanzees? We always had a fascination uh, of that question, how closely related are organisms? And biology postulates that chimpanzees and humans are very closely related, which means that humans share common ancestors with other primates like chimpanzees, more so than human might share common ancestor with macaques and other, other monkeys, or um, primates in this case, or um, other mammals. <coughs> now, human cells contain 46 chromosomes. And let's look into this uh, in, a, in an animation here in the DNA Learning Center, uh, 3D animation, that also talks a little bit about the, um, about the uh, sequencing of the human genome. The millions of bases which make up the human genome are organized into structures called chromosomes. These are arranged into 22 matching pairs plus one pair of sex chromosomes consisting of two X's in women and an X and a Y in men. So humans have a total of 46 chromosomes in each cell, known collectively as a karyotype. This set of chromosomes has a Y, so it must belong to a male. Only one chromosome in each pair is shown here. If you would like to see how our DNA is intricately folded up into chromosomes, view the animation called How DNA is Packaged. So again, 23 pairs of chromosomes in, uh, in our body cells and then uh, reduced to 23 chromosomes total in, uh, in our sex cells, sperms and, uh, and uh, egg cells. What does this look like for chimpanzees? Do they have 46? Uh, do they have more? Do they have less? So what we're going to uh, deal with now is uh, genome bioinformatics. Genomes are the entire uh, DNA in an organism whereby uh, research scientists look at it in a way that looks at each item once. So, you know, we have two chromosomes one, so they would only look at one chromosome one. We have two chromosomes two, one from mom, one from dad, but it's pretty much the same, um, so they look at one. So genome is a, a one complement of an organism's uh, DNA. The genome, genome is packaged into chromosomes, as we have seen in that first animation already a little bit, but let's go on to a second animation that gives you a, a better, even a better view of um, what this looks like. In this animation, we'll see the remarkable way our DNA is tightly packed up to fit into the nucleus of every cell. The process starts with assembly of a nucleosome, which is formed when eight separate histone protein subunits attach to the DNA molecule. The combined tight loop of DNA and protein is the nucleosome. Multiple nucleosomes are coiled together and these then stack on top of each other. The end result is a fiber of packed nucleosomes known as chromatin. 
This fiber, which at this point is condensed to a thickness of 30 nanometers, is then looped and further packaged using other proteins which are not shown here. This remarkable multiple folding allows six feet of DNA to fit into the nucleus of each cell in our body, an object so small that 10,000 nuclei could fit on the tip of a needle. The end result is that the DNA is tightly packed into the familiar structures we can see through a microscope, chromosomes. It is important to realize that chromosomes are not always present. They form only when cells are dividing. At other times, as we can see here at the end of cell division, our DNA becomes less highly organized. Couldn't have said it any better. So the thing though is um, chromosomes are there all the time. They're just not as visible as we can see in those uh, microscopy images uh, uh, that we saw just a moment ago, but they are also there um, during the uh, phases that cells don't divide. They're just more dispersed, but they are present. Now ge genomes undergo change all the time. There is DNA level mutations, chromosome level mutations, you know, jumping genes, transposons uh, move about. There are pieces that get deleted or duplicated and so forth. Crossovers, of course, between chromosomes. And then on the genome level, that entire chromosomes get duplicated or merge or uh, chromosomes can get lost. And so DNA change is at the root of the rise of new species, of course. And uh, here's a, a number of about 99.5% that humans and chimpanzees share um, um, among their genes. And then humans even share genes with plants, which is much less um, than that. So the question I would like to examine with you is actually, to what extent are the genomes of human and chimpanzee the same? The first page of the worksheet holds a description of the activity, including a few resources. I'd like to point out this uh, genome science book uh, to you. It, this uh, um, human chromosome laboratory is one of my favorite laboratories in this book which describes um, the um, laboratories, wet labs and bioinformatics laboratories in the context of genetic and genomic analysis in eukaryotes. And uh, we move on. So the first thing we want to do is we want to actually determine the number of chromosomes. We know in the human cells is 46 chromosomes, but what does that mean? What really does the human genome um, consist of in terms of the number of chromosomes if you take each chromosome only once, once across, right? So you could fill in the table. I move on straight to the National Center of Biotechnology Information because instead of doing microscopy work, I will go straight to the, um, to the source that, that is the uh, DNA of the human genome. And so I'm gonna search here for National Center for Biotechnology Information, NCBI, I'm in my browser and it comes up right here. I'm gonna click on this link <coughs> and we can go one more time in. All right, maybe two more times. Okay, cool. So this is an entrance portal for anybody who wants to work with databases that pertain to uh, genomic and nucleic acid information. Also in terms of the translated uh, nucleic acids, DNA uh, and uh, RNA sequences, as far as the proteins are concerned. And that's not only for uh, uh, um, researchers in universities or companies that use this resource, but also for lay researchers just like ourselves. And anybody can access this resource for free. I'm gonna go down here under popular resources to genome. And once I got to genome, I'm gonna click on, you see again, a whole lot of resources here. I'm gonna click on the genome data viewer. <clears throat> which brings up a nice graphical depiction of a, of a phylogenetic, of a relationship tree between different organisms and organism types. And it's set by default to human. So let's browse the human genome here <clears throat> and uh, see what we come up with. Okay, so here we zoomed in. You see here a view that holds a lot of detailed information. In fact, we have the human uh, genome here, Homo sapiens, we are dealing with chromosome one, which is 248 million base pairs long. 
And here's a depiction of this uh, human chromosome one. But I want to point your attention here on the left-hand side, where we have the entire genome, uh, human genome, and in a so-called ideogram view. And I'm going to zoom in uh, three times here, scroll down, and then we can really just count the number of human chromosomes, right? One through 22, X, Y, and the mitochondrial DNA. Mitochondrial being the organelles in our cells that uh, produce ATP and provide us with energy. And they have their own little genome that is so tiny that it wouldn't even be a dot here in this graphical representation. But if you count those through, it's 22, 23, 24, 25 chromosomes represent the human genome once across. Now, what does that look like in chimpanzee? Well, let's go back to the genome data viewer, set it here to chimpanzee and browse the chimpanzee genome to basically do the very same analysis. And here I zoomed far enough in that we see immediately only the ideogram view. And I go back, we can count this here, right? One through 22, X, Y, and mitochondrial DNA. So on first glance, it looks exactly as in the human genome, and that is 25 chromosomes rep represent the, um, the uh, uh, chimpanzee genome, but that's actually not true. If you look really closely, instead of the human chromosome two, it lists here two chromosomes, two A and two B, and it didn't even, you know, they're much, much shorter than one or three. So somehow they should be appearing back here with 14, 15, or, you know, 12, 13 in that, the, the lineup is kind of weird, isn't it? But what it really amounts to then is, if you consider there is an extra chromosome here, that we have actually the chimp genome um, consists of 26 chromosomes all the way across. So then the question is, how do you actually um, how do you actually um, um, account for this uh, for this number of uh, uh, different number of, of chromosomes in the human versus the chimpanzee genome? Now, if you wanted to do it the bioinformatics way, you would actually go ahead and take genes that are on each of the chromosomes. And I would start it out with human. I would take uh, genes from chromosome one, two, three, four, and all those, and see where they actually map in the chimpanzee genome, right? So I would use these sequences from the human genome and would then probe the chimpanzee genome with it. It's basically a Google search across the genome. And um, one thing is important to realize that we need to use sequences that code for protein because sequences that do not have a function and or code for protein can actually mutate relatively freely and thereby would not give us a good idea um, uh, if, if the, the letter sequence has changed, we couldn't find it back in the chimpanzee genome. But if we use protein uh, coding sequences, I showed you before, 99.5% uh, of our genes we share with chimpanzee. And of those genes, it's the coding sequences that we need to go after. And as described in the worksheet, I want to go to an entirely different resource. Um, that resource is actually called BioService. It's right here. And I'm going to go to BioService because I want to pick out four genes now that I want to use as a probe. Here's BioService. And again, I will zoom a tad in and a little bit more. Yeah, let's stick with this for now. There is three separate uh, sections in here. We don't want to deal with simulation server or allele server right now. We, this, we did this in other uh, uh, workshops. So we go to sequence server and we just enter it. So I'm clicking here, enter in sequence server. Not sure what's going on, here we go. And um, the sequences live in groups. So let me try to actually fix this here a little bit, okay? The sequences live uh, in, in, uh, in bundles that are called groups. So I click here on manage groups. And you see here in, in manage groups that actually the sequences here that are coming up immediately are actually sequences that were derived from work uh, that uh, school classes did or college classes. And in this case, we actually uh, working, uh, this, these are mitochondrial DNA sequences. Now we wanna change the sequence source. Here on the upper right hand side from classes, we go all the way back. Remember that I said the laboratory is in the, the genome science book. We go to genome science labs and there we find our chromosome two mystery. I check the box here. On the bottom of it, I click OK. And that brings these sequences up, right? So I have here um, a workspace that gives me the sequences. And I have human chromosome two. 
barred one. And let's focus on two because remember we have a chromosome two in the human genome and we have a two A and two B in the chimpanzee genome. So maybe there is actually a reason to assume there, there is a relationship among those. And we can actually get a total of four human um, DNA sequences out of here that are from four different human genes that are all from chromosome two. Now you don't see me say genes here. You see, there's a gene name, BARD1, LCD, SPAST, and Suckle G. And you have actually in your, in your worksheets, you have actually um, a section that tells you how you can find out what these genes are, what the functions of these genes are. But here we say ORF for all of these. And that's another word basically for coding sequence, an open reading frame going from a start codon through a bunch of triplets to a stop codon that's called open reading frame but an open reading frame encodes a protein. So that's coding sequence. How do we get the DNA out there? I click here on open. I cl click here on this sequence here and try to select all of it. Select all. And then I take the sequence out of there. So I copy it out of there. And now what I would do is I would paste actually this sequence into a Word document or something else, but let's go to work right away. And what I mean with this, what I want to do now is I want to search the, um, I want to search the um, um, genome of, uh, of human first to see where in chromosome two this gene actually um, um, is derived from. And so we can do this if we go back to this uh, genome data viewer here, and I'm going to go out of this view. I try this again, and I try this the last time, and then I will first um, just zoom out a tad and a half. All right, and now let's scroll up and get back to the genome data viewer. And the way I can conduct this search is um, to actually do a blast genome search here. Now, you know, we know already that it, that is in chromosome two, right? So why don't I go ahead and um, are we now searching human? Yeah, we search human. Okay, let's go ahead and search human. So we do this, we paste the sequence in here, you know, co uh, copy and paste. And here we don't have anything else to do really other than making sure that optimize four is set to highly similar sequences and blast. In this case, I wanna see results in a new window and I start this search. At the same time that this search is running, I'm going to go down to our chimp genome, and this is this one here. I go down to our chimp genome and do the same thing. I go to genome data viewer, and for chimp, I also start a blast search with the same human, with the same human DNA sequence. With the same human DNA sequence, I keep the highly. Also here, I want the result in a uh, new window and I start that blast search. So we have now two blast searches running. As query, we use the same sequence and that's the uh, BART one sequence from the human. And we are back here with CHIMP with the result. And uh, let me go back and see whether we have a result back for human. Wait, there's the result in human. And um, let's have a look at that first. Let's have a look at that first. Homo sapiens chromosome two. It describes in the in the uh, in the worksheet when we go to alignments, we can actually get a view of that search in the genome data viewer. And that's all I care about right now. That I see a graphical representation where this bar gene is actually located in the human genome. So I focus here on the left-hand side on this ideogram because here is nothing else than a large chromosome two, right? The human chromosome two. And that's, a, that's a, but here is where we see that hit it's actually on the long arm on chromosome two, on long arm on chrom, uh, uh, chromosome two, towards the uh, telomere, towards the end, right? The long arm of chromosome two, towards the end. So that's in the human genome. Let's try to navigate back to our search here in chimpanzee. Uh, we have a hit in the pantroglodytes, that's the uh, Latin name for chimpanzee. And here in alignments, we find actually again a view to the genome data viewer. And in the genome data viewer, we find this also back here again um, in 2B, chromosome 2B, right? close to the telomere.
just as in the human genome that it was close to the telomere of chromosome two. Now let's get out of here and um, go back to our slides. Let's go back to our slides. I'm not gonna do this uh, search now for all four of these genes that we can get from bio servers. Um, I have a few screenshots here as this show uh, looked in the human genome. Enter, we see this here. If we use all four of these genes, um, SPAS, uh, uh, BARD, and I forgot the fourth one right now, but we'll get to this in a moment. Here they are, right? LCD is the fourth one. They map just across the human chromosome too. And if we go ahead and, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, do the same analysis in, with the chimpanzee, we find that the four genes map to chromosome two, A, and to chromosome two, B. Now, if you wanna uh, put this into a sketch or a schematic, you, f you see that actually the mapping uh, can be looked at upon the way we see it here. And you wanna see this even clearer with the gene names, you see this right here. So basically, it looks like the chimpanzee 2A and 2B are entailed in human chromosome two, as if there is a head-to-head -head connection, uh, head-to-tail, well, in this representation, at least, um, uh, tail and head, head-to-tail connection between 2A and 2B that gave rise to the human chromosome two. So that question has been solved with bioinformatics. Cool. Now, bioinformatics can be tedious, right? Because remember, we had four human genes. You have to do that, uh, that blast search each time. And it's not the worst. Um, um, you saw that the blast searches came up with results pretty quickly, but then you still have to sketch this out and to figure out how this all goes together. Now, in turn, when you actually were to look at a different question, and that is, which one came first? Which one is the ancestral uh, of the two? Is it that these two fused into one, or is it that chrom human chromosome two was actually the ancestral one that we got as humans, but on the way to chimps, somewhere in the phylogenetic, on the way to chimps, that chromosome broke, human chromosome two, right? And you see that, you see that depicted here, whereby we share an ancestor with uh, chimpanzees, but that common primate ancestor is quite not there anymore. So we can't just go up there and interrogate, interrogate the, uh, the um, uh, shared common ancestor because we don't get DNA from that shared common ancestor. What should we do instead? Well, maybe if we go further back in phylogeny and find shared common ancestors that we as chimps and humans have with another organism and check that one, whether it has chromosome two and versus chromosome two A and B, and maybe that gets us uh, somewhere. And I wanna actually do this and go back to NCBI for that because, um, because uh, NCBI allows for that in the uh, database. And I just gonna have a new start here. I go to genome. You may not have seen this down here on the right, genome genome viewer. And then we see this beautiful uh, phylogenetic tree depicted here and chimpanzee. So I can click on this plus here. Now here's the thing. If we were to go to gorilla, the way this has been depicted here, and that was frankly news to me, I have to admit, um, the gorilla is sort of going back to the same common ancestor as Chim, Bonobo here, and human. Now, it makes it therefore a little difficult uh, to try to um, get the answer to our question from, from examining gorilla. Well, let's go back here and go up one rank. And we find actually, and um, we find actually that we as a group, you know, let's let's put gorilla in there, James Bonobo, and ourselves. Uh, these primates, as a group, these great apes, in fact, including ourselves, um, go back to a shared common ancestor with Pongo abeli, and Pongo abeli is actually orangutan. Let's browse the orangutan genome and see what the situation is like there. All right, down here on the left side, we're in the ideogram view you see that orangutan has two chromosomes, 2A and 2B, like in chimpanzee, and not one chromosome like human. So again, trying to resolve the question whether there was one chromosome that was ancestral and that broke into two on the way to chimps, or whether the ancestral chromosome were two chromosomes 
that in some ways or other um, fuse to, um, to represent one chromosome in humans. And we saw that at NCBI, Gorilla didn't really get us anywhere because it, uh, it was represented roughly with the same common ancestor as the other two. And yes, it has, uh, has this one here, but if that break happened here on the way to these two, you know, uh, that, that you can't decide it that way. But um, so we have to go further back and we found orangutan as a, as a living um, uh, relative that would relate back to a common ancestor with these three here. And by looking at orangutan, we saw that orangutan actually had the 2A and 2B. So that then helps us decide that question because if orangutan has 2A and 2B, then in order for us today to have other primates that have 2A and 2B that lead back to a far in the past uh, uh, common ancestor between orangutan and us, that would mean that all along the lines, it had to be two chromosomes each time. And therefore human uh, uh, had the, uh, in the lineage to humans, the uh, two chromosomes fused into one. And while there is no uh, full uh, uh, clarification on that point yet, but uh, uh, there is evidence that points towards that it's not just humans, but, uh, but that that's true for Neanderthals. And therefore, that in the lineage long ago, this fusion must have already occurred from two into one, and not just for Homo sapiens, uh, for, for the uh, 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 hominids that are uh, roaming, you know, that are living on Earth today, like ourselves. All right. So. We solved the question, two chromosomes fused into one, uh, um, a head to tail fusion here. And that still leaves us with one final uh, consideration. And that is, how come that we got from two centromeres here to a situation where we have only one centromere in the fusion chromosome? Two centromeres wouldn't be tolerable because they would really probably reap havoc with uh, how the chromosomes would be distributed during uh, cell division. So somehow this had to happen but which of the centromeres is actually still uh, being utilized in the human chromosome too? And um, you can actually do the same experiment that we did before using blast searches. This time, you know, for a change using chimp genes, genes that are located and flanking right the uh, centromeres on 2A and 2B here in chimp. And basically at first you confirm that they really map there by doing blast searches on chimp. And then you do the blast searches with these genes also on human. And yes, this result here is depicted from doing all four at once, using all four genes at once for a blast search, so that they line up nicely here. So, um, and then you can find out the function of those genes again. I'm not gonna go into this detail here, but if I, if I include the gene names in this view here, so uh, T, Golden, and Eder flank this centromere, BIN and PKV, uh, PKB4 uh, flank this centromere, and then when you, when you compare with human, Tigon, Edar, Bin, and PKB4, so that centromere is gone. It's basically not active in humans anymore. Now, research scientists did actually uh, examine uh, and were able to find uh, sequences that are similar to what the centromere sequences here in 2B are, but again, they're not um, uh, similar enough anymore that they could uh, interfere with, uh, with cell division. And uh, similar, things are true about the telomeres because we got four telomeres here and these four telomeres had to be reduced into two, which is not difficult for the telomeres at the long ends of the, of the chromosomes two A and, uh, A and B. But then with those uh, two telomeres here, that should be somewhere in the region between EDR and BIN. So in other words, somewhere in this region, as opposed to the centromere, that would be somewhere in this region. So the telomeres, Researchers can actually still find uh, remnants of the telomeric sequences here, but since it's not a telomere anymore, it really um, uh, they, they, it really mutated into uh, uh, different sequences. So that centromere here has made it into the final configuration. So we answered actually three questions using bioinformatics here. The first one was, um, how come humans have a chromosome less than, uh, than uh, chimpanzees? Is there any information missing? We found that's not the case, but that human chromosome two carries all the information of chimpanzee chromosome 2A and 2B. So that took care of that question. The second question was, which one is ancestral? And we found it's not that the human chromosome broke on the lineage to chimpanzees, but that chimpanzees uh, chromosomes fused into a chromosome that we find into human. 
And then the third thing we found out is that the central mare of uh, chromosome, chimp chromosome 2A, is the central mare of the human chromosome 2 that we have nowadays. Well, thank you for joining us for this, uh, uh, for this uh, the, um, um, edition of uh, DNA LC Live. Um, it was a pleasure working with you, and uh, I would recommend that you check out DNA Interactive, which uh, gives you actually a good follow-up to the things that we did here together, including a genome map here that highlights uh, spots in the human genome. And this spot here that you see highlighted a little bit in red, it's actually the LCT gene. It has to do with lactose tolerance or lactose intolerance because it encodes uh, lactase. If you did your work, you would know by now, right? And, um, and so this is a very interesting interesting feature here. And then uh, the, the, the uh, uh, genome spots map. And then also in that very same section genome, uh, all the information that pertains to the uh, project to sequence the human genome. So check this out as long as we can still use Flash because uh, at least currently um, they are based on Flash still and in dnainteractive.org. So have a great summer and I hope to see you back in the fall.